Well, good evening and welcome to Intentional Living. I'm glad you're here and joining us for our Bible study tonight. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's been a rough, rough couple of days. Um, <clears throat> I've talked to a few people and said they uh, sense that I was not feeling good on Sunday, and you are correct. I was pretty weak, <clears throat> and um, but I have all the recording equipment here at home, and I wasn't going to call somebody at the last minute to, to record a sermon to do that to somebody, so I I got us through it, and the Lord was good to us, <clears throat> and um, feeling a little better tonight. Hopefully, going to be back with you on church on Sunday morning, 9 and 1030. Uh, God's been good to us. Uh, we have been sick, but um, not to the extent of many that many people have, so we're just praising the Lord uh, for that. <clears throat> I want to talk to you tonight <clears throat> for a few minutes, and I it may even be a little shorter tonight. Some of you will say, yeah, right, but um, anyhow disruptions disruptions Disru disruptions come in all sizes small medium large extra large extra extra large extra 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 large they come in all kind of sizes um, <clears throat> you plan to cut the grass and the lawnmower breaks um, the game gets rained out um, the offer that you were expecting the job offer didn't ever get offered the job that you had ended um, recently we've seen every type of disruption that you could possibly think of um, church canceled schools canceled graduations canceled uh, or postponed <clears throat> stay at home that's a disruption um, <clears throat> products that you can't get uh, things are back order disruption after disruption after disruption <clears throat> You plan and you plan and you plan and you plan and then you cancel those plans and you cancel the plans that you made for the canceled plans and boy it, <clears throat> We've experienced that as we're trying to um, plan different things for the church for the school and it, it's just um, Some of you have been able to go on vacation some of you have not you book a hotel room and Then you have to cancel it or you book the hotel and the hotel cancels it on you disruptions Have become a way of life haven't they? I believe you can absolutely <clears throat> agree with that statement. Two weeks ago, our lives, the lives of the Truitts, had a total disruption. Our lives came to a screeching halt. Disruptions. Disruptions. So, when I think back of the disruption that I'm still going through, <clears throat> in light of eternity, it's a minor disruption. And I'm not going to let this disruption just totally ruin my life for these days, and especially for the days to come. So tonight, <clears throat> I want to talk to you. The series we've been in promises to stand on disruption or design. As I told you Sunday, you're probably seeing me drink a lot more water tonight so I don't have to keep clearing my throat and driving you crazy. But we've been walking through this series by Rob Morgan. We're almost to the end. <clears throat> Actually, one more lesson uh, in this series, Promises to Stand On, from Romans 8.28. Let's look at our key verse that we've been looking at. <clears throat> Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those that are called according to his purpose. Then recently we looked right at this verse, Ephesians 1.11. We have also received an inheritance in him predestined according to the purpose of the one who works out everything in agreement <clears throat> with the decision of his will. <clears throat> now tonight's verse, look at this verse. Philippians 1 and verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advance of the gospel. So tonight... <clears throat> I've entitled tonight's message, Disruption or Designed? Disruption or Designed? Let's pray together, and then we'll look into this verse in Philippians 1, verse 12. Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come together again. Lord, we um, eagerly anticipate Sunday when we can gather together again as a group of believers. Lord, thank you for this time that <clears throat> we've um, quarantined and that we have... Um, stopped our services and Lord, I praise the Lord that Lord that we didn't have an outbreak at our church so Lord thank you for 
uh, allowing us to be wise and to take that little break. And uh, so, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for watching over our people uh, and our staff and uh, my family during these days. Lord, I pray for others who are sick. Lord, I do pray for Pastor Carl Sexton right now as he is just <clears throat> in a very, very difficult situation with COVID and he's hospitalized and or he is just very, very sick in ICU. I pray that you would bless him. Lord, bless, <clears throat> bless others in our church who are sick, maybe not be from COVID, but uh, are, are very sick and need our prayers tonight. So Lord, we thank you. We praise you for what you do, work in and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. <clears throat> Amen. You must understand that <clears throat> the writer of Philippians, who was Paul, you must understand where he was in his life when he wrote the verse that we just read together. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advance of the gospel. You need to understand where he was. He was in Jerusalem. He was in jail in Caesarea and then placed under house arrest in Rome. So things weren't just going exactly great for our dear brother Paul. <clears throat> it wasn't a good time for him. He was experiencing Murphy's Law uh, to the greatest degree. Whatever could happen was happening to him. Practically speaking, he could not catch a break. Rob Morgan is the book I've been reading behind. Um, this is one statement I'm going to use over and over again tonight to you, but I think it's a great statement. Our worst problems become our best pulpits. Think about that again as you read it. Our worst problems become our best pulpits. They can become the platforms for sharing what God has done and what can God can do in someone else's life. Point number one, quickly tonight. Um, opportunity through obstacles. And I, I want to go in a couple of verses prior to that in Philippians 1 in verse 6. It says, I am sure of this, Paul says, that he who started or began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. To summarize Paul's statements here, and then specifically Philippians 1 and verse 12, which is our text for tonight, <clears throat> to summarize Paul's question, Paul was asking, what's happening to me? What's going on? He, he had this constant thorn in the flesh who we still who we can't determine what that was or speculation as to what that was but no one has concrete answers on that and Paul didn't share many details about that thorn in the flesh and now he's not sharing many details about the situation he's in you know I think Paul didn't share many details about his suffering uh, or disruptions because he just chose not to and he didn't want to focus on the disruption as much as he did the opportunities. How about you today? What things have happened to you? Things that weren't your fault. Things you had no control over. And they just happened. You know, you need to begin looking at those as opportunities instead of obstacles. Obstacles. Now, <clears throat> let me give you another another very practical thing about that. If you wait to after the problem has happened, you're probably not going to see it as an, as an opportunity. So right now, we have to train our minds and our thinking and our self-will that whatever, gonna, whatever comes at me today, good or bad, I want to see it as an opportunity instead of an obstacle. If I, if I think that way before something happens to me, I've got a better chance of responding in that way. So I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> right now, tonight, decide for tomorrow that you're going to see things as opportunities instead of op obstacles. If you wait until you're in the middle of it, you're probably going to still see it as an obstacle. Let's see what else tonight. Not only opportunities uh, through obstacles, but disruptions change our path. When your path changes, the people in your path also change. Think about that. When your path changes, 
the people of your path many times change. When we come in contact with different people then, it also gives us a different perspective. Paul was put before some different people. <clears throat> We've already said his path has changed. Let's, let's look back at those verses real quickly. Philippians 1, 12 and 13. I'm going to have it on the screen for you right here. <clears throat> now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advancement of the gospel so that it has became, become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is in the cause of Christ. Let that verse sink in for a moment. Now, <clears throat> Paul was put now before the Praetorian Guard, and also he's now been put before the royal household with his imprisonment. And so now <clears throat> his path has changed. He was on these missionary journeys, and now because of this disruption, being a prisoner, his path has changed. But not only has his path changed, the people of his path have changed. Every trial or tribulation has the potential of becoming a testimony. And you know, Rob Morgan in his book says that's a characteristic of God's heroes. When they turn trials into testimonies. You know, <clears throat> because I've been quarantined, <laughs> no one's been in my path. I haven't had a, <clears throat> uh, I did have a path that changed, but the people in my path have changed. I've been around two people, three if you count a dog. <laughs> but Hunter, I mean, no, not Hunter, Easton and Kim are the only people who have been in our path for the last 14 days and, and our doctor. But I have prayed that God will put people inside my path as a result of this and that I will give God the glory through this and that somehow through this I could have an impact in our church and have an impact <clears throat> in our community. A pastor friend called me this week and he was talking to me about how I was feeling and what I've been through and what the challenges have been and how maybe I could help some others. And he said, Chris... <clears throat> Because you have had COVID now, you have a different platform than others have. And I'm just praying somehow, some way, God's going to use this in my life to have an impact. <clears throat> I'm looking for opportunities through my obstacle. Rob Morgan said this, God can turn tragedies into testimonies and uses emergencies for evangelism. What a great statement. You ever had an emergency in your life <clears throat> that you really had to totally trust God on and that emergency is now a part of your testimony? I know people who've been through that. My dad went through that. I told you before about his sickness. <clears throat> his emergency ended up being a testimony during those days. So disruptions change your path. Point number three tonight. <clears throat> Prepare for disruptions. Look at verse four. Um, I don't think I have that one on there for you. Always praying with joy for all of you in every prayer. How do you prepare for disruptions? It's a good question. <clears throat> you cannot prepare for every disruption. You can't. Um, we had a hurricane last week, a, a small hurricane. But did you prepare? You probably did to some degree. Now, for those of us who have lived around this area uh, for some time, um, there was a sense that it wasn't going to be a too bad of a storm. And that's the time you can get yourself in trouble because then that thing can change like that. But we prepared. <clears throat> Kim and I prepared. I, I made sure we had enough bottled water. I, I, sure we, I made sure we had gas for our uh, generator that's still in the box. 
but uh, then I, I, I prepared. I, he said, and I got outside and put things in the barn and things that could blow away. And so we spent a little time preparing. I got some batteries, uh, had some batteries, and made sure I knew where our flashlights were and, and those type of things. We prepared for that possible disruption. Thankfully, uh, this time it wasn't a disruption. But how do you prepare for disruptions? You prepare spiritually every day of your life if you're a Christian. I'm telling you, you have to prepare for disruptions every day. <clears throat> Bible knowledge, and not just head knowledge. It's, it's, it's heart knowledge. Are, are you reading your Bible? Are you preparing? I'm telling you, if things knock you off your game easily, it's probably because you are not preparing daily through scripture reading and prayer. So reading your Bible, Bible knowledge and prayer, those are the two essential ways to prepare. But secondly, look for an opportunity in the obstacle. We just talked about that a few minutes ago. Then seize the moment to share your faith. Seize the moment to share Christ. Look for that opportunity. As you're looking at your obstacle and go and are thinking, I'm going to make this an, an, an opportunity, then look quickly for the opportunities to share your faith and to share Christ. And then, here, get this one out. <clears throat> Don't underestimate how God may use you. God may just give you that opportunity. So, prepare for those opportunities. Prepare for disruptions. Point number four tonight, and I'll tell you, I'll be very practical and a little shorter. Be the person God uses. Be that person God uses. Responding in a biblical way may do two things for you. First of all, it may impact the lost. A lost person may see how you're responding to a tragedy, to a trial, to a suffering, and they may see Christ in you. So <clears throat> you may have impact on the lost, but then secondly, you may be an encouragement to other believers who need to respond accordingly. And they're seeing how you respond. Let me tell you, the world is watching during these unprecedented days. The world is watching <clears throat> how you're responding. Let me tell you this. The world is watching how you respond on social media. Let me go a step further. <clears throat> Other believers are watching how you respond on social media to today's culture, to today's headlines, to today's current events, <clears throat> to how things are being handled in your local community, in our local community, people are watching how we respond. I believe in this day and in this time, and I really hope that this goes widespread and people will listen and hear. We as Christians, more than ever before, need to watch how we respond and respond in a calm and biblical and loving way. Disruptions are going to happen. They're a part of life. These things that we are seeing in our world today, some of them we've been promised in the scriptures are coming to pass. How are you going to respond? How are you responding today? Prepare for disruptions. <clears throat> And be the person that God uses. God may give you that opportunity. He may open a door wide open for you through obstacles. Now, last, <clears throat> ink for your pen. That's an interesting point. I got that one from Rob Morgan. It gave the circumstances that Paul was in at this very moment in Scripture it gave him more reason to write. It gave him more ink for his pen. It increased what he had to say. <clears throat> you know what? 
as I go through trials and tough times, it gives me more things to say because the more things I go through and come out on the other side, there's more opportunities for me to give God the glory and for me to share with others <clears throat> how God brought me through a situation. He gave more ink for Paul's pen. You know, <clears throat> without the trials that Paul went through, we don't have the testimonies of Paul that we read. They brought him through and gave him more ink for his pen. He had more to say than he had ever had to say. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that's my conclusion for tonight. But I do want to tell you this. Going through COVID has given me a different perspective. I'm gonna, and I'm going to share some of those perspectives with you in the coming days. <clears throat> I think it can help you if you have to go through it. It may can help others who are having to go through it. But I think it will help some of us just as we go through trials and struggles and sufferings in this life. It's nothing rocket science. It's, no, it's nothing that's just, uh, it's just some things that God has taught me through this trial. If you go through a trial, God's going to teach you things. But having COVID <clears throat> has definitely given me a different perspective on this entire pandemic. I'll share that with you at a later day. But how about Romans 8.28? Let me ask you again. Are you a Romans 8.28 person? For we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. How about a Philippians 1.12 person? Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advancing of the gospel. Has your trial taken the gospel further? God may be laying that right in your lap to take the gospel to a whole different people than you're normally around because it changed your path and it changed your people. Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. <clears throat> Let's close in prayer. Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to spend a few minutes together tonight looking in your word from Philippians chapter 1. Lord, I pray that this would help somebody tonight or that it would change their perspective and give them a positive perspective about the struggle or the trial or the situation they are currently in. Lord, thank you for our time together. Right, and we look forward to Sunday. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you have a great uh, rest of the week. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday, 9 and 1030 uh, at the church building, Lord willing. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. May God bless you and live your life intentionally.